So everybody, I am in Inveruri. How do you pronounce it? How do you pronounce it? Inveruri. 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 I'm in Inveruri. So Gary and I have just been uh, let loose around uh, the Stuart factory. We have uh, grabbed Mandy and James Stuart and we have cornered them. And they're not that terribly happy about, <laughs> <laughs> about being cornered. But we just wanted to have a little bit of a chat with you and talk about um, your business, when you started and how you've got to where you are to where, where you are today and where you are today is at the top of your game when it comes to manufacturing trailers. I don't think there's any question about that. So I'm going to start off with you, James. I'm going to ask you, what possessed you to start building trailers? My goodness. I don't know. It wasn't life's ambition to be a trailer builder, but we were working on Arctic trailers, we were modifying Arctic trailers, we were developing them, and every local farmer came and asked us to build a trailer for his fast track. And that was probably the thing that kicked us into motion. And then realised very quickly that there was a need for something better. A high quality trailer, could operate high speed, could operate behind the fast track. And that let us know that there was a requirement for something better. And we've stuck to that principle ever since. And quality has been the number one item from the very beginning. Not to be the biggest trailer builder, there's plenty of those going around, it was just to be building something of very good quality. And that's been our thought really from the very beginning. And we haven't changed from that. You know, came from a farming background, was a tractor mechanic, so we knew the agricultural part. And with the commercial vehicles, the Arctic trailers is where we learned so much about what technology they had. And it just came along at the right time. As tractors were getting faster, they were looking for bigger, you know, bigger and better equipment. And we still draw on that industry. You know, that's where a lot of our you know, components come from, and that's where a lot of the technology comes from. We are drawing in that massive industry to gain that experience, which is great. So, mm -hmm. we, you know. It, I'm gonna move over now. Mandy, you said you were only here for moral support, but I'm asking you <laughs> questions, so. <laughs> you are head and shoulders into this business. Yes. What? parts do you like the most or do you, you know, what would you describe your role over the years? How has it changed? Well, going back a few years ago when we had fewer employees, I did all of the accounting, payroll, everything like that, as well as actually on occasion working outside, quite often finishing trailers and wiring lights and things like that. That was my area of speciality. As the business has grown and we've got more employees, we now have a full-time accountant. We've got ladies doing payroll, things like that. So my role has changed over the years. I oversee everything like that and run the office, but the main function I do now, um, a lot of it is advertising, marketing, social media, and I process all those trailer orders and check every single order coming in because each trailer is, is custom built, basically. Somebody's got to do that. So I check all the orders and allocate serial numbers. So you are the reason behind the double checking, triple checking, 
and making sure everything's right and the paper trail throughout yeah. the, 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 the factory as you walk the, around. The joke, the joke is that I'm just a little bit OCD. <laughs> just, just a little just, bit. Just a wee bit. Funny, I think the man beside you is a little bit OCD <laughs> as well. Know, maybe, maybe not in the office. I can't answer that no. question. But um, when no. we've seen some of the, the the moves out there of what was going on, now there's definitely a common <laughs> theme of OCD coming across. But you two work very much as a team. Definitely, definitely. And when it comes to the likes of, you know, the big show for you and one of our favourite shows of the year, the likes of the Highland show, the Royal Highland show, the day before the show, you'll not be sitting in the office um, with a team of guys Sadly with a paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be there cleaning up your stand, tyre slicking the tyres, as we do, really are hands on from that point of view. Is that something you pride yourselves in? Definitely, yes. Yes, we would like to like to be involved with everything and it's back to being OCD. I like to be there to make sure everything's right. That's the thing, we've got a fantastic team and the guys will come to like the Highland Show and help us set up, but we've got to be there and got to be, you know, a part of it to make sure that it's as we want it, but mm -hmm. it, you know, the Highland Show is such an important event for us. And the, the great thing of working together is that, you know, I'm not having to look around the office every day to see things is being done correctly and hopefully Mandy's not having to look out <laughs> the factory every day and see everything's being run outside correctly. We've both got our own parts of the business and it is quite amazing you go home at night and you, know, you end up speaking about it because you haven't the time during the day to speak about it and catch up on what's going on. Occasionally we're banned from speaking about work at night, however yeah, it has that, to happen. That, that's probably what should be happening a lot more <laughs> to be honest but going back what was the first mainstream product that was sold out of here with your name on it? The first new product would have been a cattle float. Mm. Cattle float, aluminium cattle box would be in 1990. And, you know, I've always believed that livestock containers should be made in aluminium because they're going to rust. So if you make it out of aluminium, it's going to survive. And that's that's true because that first box from 1990 is still operating. So we just continued with that and anything we put into our boxes these days, if it's not aluminium, it's stainless steel. If it's not stainless steel, it's galvanised. And but to add weight to what you just said there, there is one sitting up in um, your storage yard just sitting up there. It's 2006 and it's actually still in fantastic shape. A wee wash maybe, but you know, <laughs> no, but it is, it's in, it's yes. in great shape and you can see it's intact and because Gary and I, we did take a look at that so and we were like, that's 14 years old at this stage, <laughs> you know. It, I know, in that, that particular trailer, if you actually knew how many animals have been through that thing, it would surprise you beyond, beyond belief and it's great. We love seeing something like that coming back. The guy bought, a, he actually bought three new ones and that one came back. When you see the condition after all that time, it does make you happy because you know what you're doing, you're building it correctly, you know it's surviving. And that's what it's all about. So shortly after the, the, the cattle float, so trying to get the, your range of trailers into our heads as well as we go along. So CF cattle float, so the cattle float sits on top of an FT, which is a flat trailer. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, so for people looking through and trying to understand all the letters. So after, I suppose, your flat trailer and your cattle float, then you moved on to... Tippers, you... tippers would have been the next, the next thing. And when you say tippers, do you mean like silage grain or dump trailer type tippers or all type of tippers? Uh, grain trailers would have been the, the first thing. Mm -hmm. Grain trailers, this is predominantly a grain area up here. So it was grain trailers was the, the main tipping trailers and we did the occasional silage trailer. And as time has developed and they've gone further afield, then silage trailers become a far more important part of it. Now you said something there, Mandy, further afield. What does that mean? Further afield in the early days meant selling trailers outside of Aberdeenshire. Mm -hmm. and it then extended to the rest of the UK and we worked quite hard in those early days selling trailers because the dealers didn't know who we were and they weren't terribly interested. So there was an awful lot of work went in at that time, wasn't there? And 
James would go away travelling a lot and I was left running everything here on my own because we're just the two of us to do it all. <clears throat> and with time that evolves and as the name gets better known, the dealers then started coming to us wanting to sell trailers on our behalf. Um, and we've now built up a very good dealer network in the UK and we've exported a fair few and the main markets now are Australia and New Zealand. Um, we have sent trailers to Japan recently, so we have an agent there. With the power of the internet now, the world's a much smaller place and it means that we do get inquiries from some random corners of the world. And last year we had an inquiry from someone looking for trailers to move sugarcane in Grenada. And he'd been speaking to various trailer builders around Europe and couldn't find anyone who would custom build trailers. So we said, yes, well, of course we can do that. Not a problem. With the result that we did uh, design, you designed trailers just for moving sugarcane. And we built four trailers and sent them out to Grenada where they are now working. So it's really interesting to get these projects that are just really one-offs. This is something you have prided yourselves on probably since the start. And I think it's denoted on your trailers now by a Z special build. Yeah. Yes. And you will take on anything. And, and the one that springs to my mind that's in Finishing Bay A. <laughs> Excellent is a trailer that has been made 3.1 metres wide, hard ox. It has lock, stock and smoke and barrel on that trailer. There's ABS. Um, there is, well, like everything has been made a, a, according to, it has Michelin Cargo X bibs, 600s, VF, tires on 26 and a half inch rim. I actually got Gary to stand beside the rim to take a, <laughs> or beside the wheel to take a picture of him. That was a mega, mega trailer. <coughs> Not sure the bank balance would like to pay for it, but that's, and like that, that, that's moving into your latest and greatest, the Pro Series. That 3.1 meter wide trailer is being designed for controlled traffic. Customer wanted something to follow the combine tracks. He wanted something to miss the bout of straw, so it had to be wide. So when somebody comes along with a project like that, well, you can see sense in it. You can see the reason for it. We don't mind spending time on it. And following on even from that, what you've just said there, you have another trailer which is parked up pride and uh, pride of place as you come in through the gate that can take advantage of the. Michelin tires that's on it with the with the ground pressure because you've actually a tire system it's designed and created and on some trailers that you can actually inflate and deflate. Yes. Tires like that's on a trailer. What's that all about? What? <laughs> this is the th this is it. <laughs> you know, it really stems back to the fact that we've got low ground pressure tires now. Every trailer out in the field's got low ground pressure tires but they're sitting between 60 and 75 PSI. So why have we got low ground pressure tires at 75 PSI? It doesn't make sense. 75 PSI for going on the road. Now nobody's gonna put them down specifically just go in the field and blow them up again. So we need an automatic system to be able to do that. And now we've got that. We've got a fantastic central tire inflation, which will allow us to drop the tire pressure right down to two bar within 40 seconds. And we can get it back up again to road, a usable road pressure in another 40 seconds. So when we're in the field, we're not crushing the worms, we're not crushing the soil, and we're saving fuel. Because a soft tyre in the field is easy to tow. But when we go on the road, we want a hard tyre. And a hard tyre on the road is saving fuel again. So we're then, all of a sudden, getting the benefit out of these tyres. These tyres are full of technology. But yet, currently, we're just using them at one pressure. So we're only getting a tiny use of the technology. The central tire inflation is there to get the bottom end use out the tire and then press the button and you've then got road pressure. The one stumbling block for us for a long time was the fact if the driver didn't press the button to inflate the tire pressure, he could potentially wreck them very, very quickly. These tires have got to be... Yeah, just, just overheat the rubber. 
Yes. Yeah. They have got a load carrying capacity for a pressure and a speed, so they must be... Speed sensor of some description. Yes. So, we got a speed <laughs> sensor, button's not pressed, tractor's up to speed, it'll automatically inflate the tires. And that's what we were wanting. We wanted, we, we didn't put, didn't want to put anything on unless it had that. So, we've got it and now it's, I think, it's a fantastic system. So, now we can use the tires to, you know, full advantage. And your axle of choice here is the granning axle. For the, well, for, for the bigger assemblies, I know I did notice some of the smaller trailers on ADRs, which is a perfectly good axle, but for your, I'll call them bigger or heavier, or whatever way you want to word it, granning seems to be the... Yeah, to keep granning on our toes, yes, they're currently, currently we're favourite supplier. <laughs> <laughs> All spare and love and war. <laughs> yeah, we've dealt with granning for... Must be about 25 years now. Also a long time, long time. a long time of your business you've been but working. We do have a, we've got a good working relationship and the thing about granning is that they are very good at supplying things like brake calculations so if you ring up and speak to them you'll get a brake calculation very quickly and there are things like the wide axles, they are willing to work with us and supply these bespoke items. Odd balls as we, we talked about and they will work with that but that's mm. very, very important. Coming to making a trailer, mm -hmm. just going to talk very quickly around the process. So, Shed One's fabrication. You literally, I don't know how to word this, but you cut all your metal, you put it into a system where you have stillages, if that's the right kind of way to word that. So, a trailer comes in a stillage. Then you put a two man team onto each trailer, they will see that trailer through. And then once it moves out of there, it's over to number two, which is paint. And you're running a, I'll call it a double two-pack system. That's correct. Two-pack prime, two-pack finish. And um, was there any reason for blue? I'll speak about the colour, and you can speak about the rest of it. But <laughs> <laughs> We chose blue because I liked blue. It's simple as that. There were, there were other trailer builders going about and they were different colours, so blue was not there. But I did like blue. And it stands out well in the countryside. And it stands you know, out if you, well. If you see a blue trailer, you know you're just looking at a Stuart trailer. So we mm -hmm. like to stick with that. And that's why we like to stay with blue and we don't like doing different colours. We like, when you're driving around, we want you to know that you're looking at a Stuart trailer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it comes out of the paint bay, moves over to shade three and you have three bays ABC and they were the finishing bays so they're getting all the little touches, lights, floors if it's low loaders or whatever they're getting done, little bits of accelerates uh, added on and then you have your aluminium bay so you have your separate for your, your cattle floats and they're working all the time in there and I mean you've even got some you've worked very hard over the years your back door, you have your, your own design, your own basically um, the one thing that, that stood out to us walking around is that there's a fantastic team spirit about here. I mean, everybody was showing us what they were doing from the laser cutting to the folding to the big machines to the, you know, putting the, the finishing touches to the trailer to cutting down at the start to forklifts move and stuff about to the welding to the ever and to the axles we we literally had a, had a free reign and everybody but inside every shade you have a big stamp and it utters the words team Stuart with a tick so you must have a massive emphasis on team spirit here I see it and I, I very happily to say I see it and it shines through is that something you you know something. was that not something you should be proud of because well, I think it's something to be very proud of we are very proud of the team spirit but that comes from the team themselves and we're very fortunate to have a fantastic team of people here and it's we always say we can't do the job without every single person in the team everybody plays their part whether it's somebody in the office or guys working outside and the guys in the forklifts, everybody's got their role to play into ultimately producing the trailer and it going away. And we're really very fortunate, the team that we have now. It was difficult in the earlier years, <coughs> but we are, we've got a good stable workforce now 
and it just makes life an awful lot easier. They're all very willing and they themselves are very proud of what they do, which probably came across when you were speaking to them. Yeah. There's only one thing I see, but that we need to change, and that's the FH needs to be replaced by an S series Scania, but we can work on that. <laughs> <laughs> that might take a little longer, yes. <laughs> you obviously haven't started a new FH, that's probably why. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. Uh, <laughs> a a volvolent. <laughs> but look, um, Manly and James, look, thank you very much for uh, inviting us up. It's been a pleasure to come look around your business and showcase your business because it's exactly, I mean, the, you know, the camera doesn't lie, so the camera will show people exactly what's going on here, the level of engineering, the level of work, the bespoke nature of what you do, the family atmosphere and the team spirit. It, it will all shine through, and it, you know what? It's a pleasure. We, we've left rainy Northern Ireland. We've travelled up through the rain, and today when we're here, the sun has shone down on us, which has been fantastic to see, and we'll hopefully get to play with some of your products or maybe go out and about and see some guys using your stuff this summer that would be awesome and everybody can stay tuned and and watch that so thank you very much on behalf of everyone at Grassmen. we've had a great day hi folks hope you enjoyed the video there we love to hear your feedback so drop us a comment below don't forget to hit the subscribe button um, and tune in for all our latest content every week.